welcome back to Candidate Focus. I am your host, Michael Covington, and I have with me Adam Thompson, who is a candidate for County Commission in District 8, Northeast Knox County. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. All right. Um, why are you running for County Commission? Why am I running for County Commission? Um, <laughs> well, I'm a generational uh, resident of, of the 8th District over in Corrington. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's home. It's where uh, uh, we've We've farmed for, uh, I guess, about six generations now, and um, it's a special place. Uh, District 8 is, is unique from the rest of the county. Um, and I found ourselves, in, it's a, a pivotal point um, <clears throat> with, uh, with development and land growth and um, you know, people moving into the area. Uh, there's a lot of decisions that are gonna be uh, coming down the pike that you know, now's, the, now's our time to have a, uh, not just a voice, uh, but also a vote on county commission and where the, the residents feel like they're heard and re well represented. So um, if we want a seat at the table, now's the time to do it. Okay. Adam, and this is a question I have not asked anyone else, but, but something you said made me think this is a question to ask. Tell me about the moment you decided, I'm going to run for <laughs> county commission in the district. The, the moment. Um, well, I'd, I'd been mulling it over for a few years. Okay. Um, obviously, Commissioner Beeler um, has, has been serving in the 8th district. Um, he, he announced he was not going to be running for re-election. Um, and so, I uh, thought, well, uh, now's, now's the time. If, if we're going to do it, do it. Um, it was um, not something that was um, a last-minute decision, but something that went over, went over thought. And one of those were, well, I guess here we go. Let's, let's do it. Okay. Um, a, a lot of, I'd, have, I'd had a lot of uh, folks encourage me and suggest that I do it for, for a couple years. But... Uh, you know, it, it took a little little persuasion, and then we, we jumped in. And I mean, I, I'm passionate about the Eighth District. Um, it is home. Uh, there's a lot of heritage there, and a lot of a lot of rural communities that um, you know, mean mean a lot to me. Okay. And um, are you a, a fairly known commodity in your in your district? Or are you when you go to different parts of the of the uh, uh, district, do people just know who you are? Um, in some parts, yes. Other parts, no. Um, so no, I'm, I'm not. Um, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a local celebrity. No. <laughs> well, and, and I ask that because you, you've been farming for generations yes, in that area. Yeah, yeah. In, in now in in Corrington, mm -hmm. uh, in that area, yes. Um, we've been there for six generations. Uh, we our farm goes back to 1840, um, and so we've we've been around a day or two. We've been active in the community, uh, with Corrington Community Club, um, and uh, organizations like that. We go to Washington Presbyterian Church. Uh, our Apple Festival uh, just celebrated, I think it's 43rd uh, year this year. So um, we've been fairly active, yes. Okay. All right. And uh, what are the biggest challenges you, you see facing Knox County? Um, well, one, um, obviously growth and development. Mm -hmm. um, when we have, I guess, you know, they projected somewhere around 70,000 residents. Um, coming to Knox County and they're gonna have to live somewhere <laughs> and okay. so when we're talking about bringing in housing and infrastructure and where where are the kids gonna go to school where's the traffic flow gonna be how can we provide uh, safety and security and in, in police and fire and ambulance and all those emergency services mm -hmm. for those for those new residents where are they gonna go uh, what what will that look like for the 8th district for 8 10 15 years down the road mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when we did the, the sector plans and all of that back in 2005, and even now, when going through advanced Knox, one of the main concerns for everyone in the 8th District seems to be preserving the rural character of District 8. Um, and so that's, that's been very important um, because just because we, we, we have a lot of folks wanting to move to the area, well, we know why they're wanting to move here. It's for the same reason we've been here for generations. Um, and it's because of the rural feel. We have the mountains, we're, we're basically at the foothills uh, of the Smokies. Um, over in Corrington, we have House Mountain, which is uh, honestly the, the highest elevation point in Knox County. Um, and so there's a lot of, lot of farmland, a lot of, lot of history there. Uh, so a lot of folks are, you know, they just want to make sure that we don't, we don't destroy it as we grow. And Advanced Knox, they're looking at the next 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. how we shape development and moving out into that 9,000 acre area. Right. Um, 
let's 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 take it to um, to a sticky situation. And when I say a sticky situation, I'm 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 thinking in terms of a developer approaching you and saying, "Hey, Adam, I could really use your help. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to put um, some some units, uh, some duplexes in, in an area. I'm mm -hmm. buying some property and and um, it, it, it it's." The, the location, the proposed location is in an area where almost immediately uh, your, your neighbors mm -hmm. decide, we don't want this, mm -hmm. we don't want this. So how do you, be, how, how, how do you position yourself as that fulcrum that, that is in between the developer who has the land mm -hmm. and he has the backing or the support or uh, he has the, 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 the benefit of what Advanced Knox is trying to do in terms of reshaping rural land. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you position yourself in between folks that you've known all your life mm -hmm. and a developer who's saying, yeah, but Advanced Knox is encouraging this. How do, you, how do you position yourself in between those two factions, so to speak? Well, you're right. That would be a bit of a sticky situation. Um, but honestly, the way, I, the way I'm approaching... Uh, everything and and this is kind of the two pillars of my my platform was resp respectful and responsible uh, government and growth mm -hmm. um, so if it's if it's responsible so in in it when you're meeting advanced Knox you have the plan growth map that uh, the committee just just approved they're sending it to uh, Commission City Council and Town of Farragut uh, for them to adopt it mm -hmm. so there's a plan growth area then there's the rural area outside of that um, if it's it within the the plan growth area there are still stipulations. Uh, there, there will still be um, some regulations that they'll they'll need to follow and some guidelines. Um, obviously, you know, we not, we hadn't gotten into the UDO and the the general plan and, and and those things yet. So there's still a lot of finite details to iron out. Mm -hmm. But honestly, we'd be going back to the plan. If it's in the rural area, the rural area obviously states uh, that it's two dwelling units per acre, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's the max for the the rural area. Um, those those provisions were put in there for a reason, uh, to protect those those rural areas. Now, in the planned growth area, there may be some other provisions, but again, it needs to it needs to be respectful of the area that it's in. Mm -hmm. um, we needs to be respect, honestly, responsible for you know, the infrastructure. What's it going to do to our schools? What's it going to do for the uh, fire, police, EMT uh, response units? Um, how does it you know, how does it serve for for traffic and roads? can it be supported? If it can't be supported, then we really need to make sure that all of our agencies moving forward are on the same page. So we can't just work on infrastructure on our roads and leave the uh, Knox County schools out of it. Uh, because if we, if we can have the roads, we can have the traffic, and we can deal with the waste, but we don't have any place for those kids to go to school, we have other problems. So it's really just making sure there's collaboration between er making sure everything's in place so that when, if, a, a development of a certain size is approved, it can be supported, but um, it's also respectful of the, of the surrounding neighborhoods. Okay. So um, it, it really would be a case-by-case -case basis, but following the guidelines that are put forth in that, in that growth plan, right. um, because you know, in the last 15 years, and more so recently, um, there have been a lot of um, amendments made mm -hmm. and changes to the sector plans and you know turn an application if it seems to fit the area because it is 15 years old mm -hmm. um, then you know there have been exceptions so now that we have a new plan I think those those guidelines need to be followed okay you'd be representing a rural uh, part of the county and mm -hmm. and um, uh, the recent um, difficulties that the Commission had in resolving the the ambulance contract issue mm -hmm. um, with a rural district, you've got you've got residents who, when they make a, a call that there's a there's a heart issue or or there's been an accident on mm -hmm. the farm, um, they need a quick response. Mm -hmm. um, what are your feelings about how that that situation was resolved, and are you confident that the um, uh, ambulance service provider will 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 provide good service for your constituents? Well, I I guess it. Uh has yet to be, you know, determined whether whether moving forward it'll it'll work. Mm -hmm. um, I know for for us this past summer, um, my grandmother um, fell, and we had the rural metro and AMT come out, and um, 
for them, I mean, we have we have stations in in Coryton, Gibbs, Mascot, um, so there's there's stations around, mm -hmm. um, and fairly close, and so it depends on where where you are in the eighth district, where, where a station's close to you, um, but I would I would like to see that you know we we can maintain those short response times because it, it is important, um, especially when when you're talking about hard events and things like that. Right. Um, so, um, budgets. Mm -hmm. um, would you consider yourself a a, a, a a budget hawk, or would you consider <laughs> yourself a liberal liberal minded um, uh, budget participant? Um, by liberal minded, I kind of kind of free spending. Free, free, no. free spending. No, no, no. You're free spending. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of folks a lot of folks like to trim fat from budgets mm -hmm. uh, where they can find it. Uh, others like to spend because it looks like there's a ton of money there. And a billion dollars is a is a is a hefty budget. Mm -hmm. Sixty percent of that goes to schools. Right. Um, how how would you approach? your you're one eleventh of the county right. commission. <laughs> sure. Um, your your eleventh. Mm -hmm. What would your eleventh contribution be in terms of <laughs> of uh, uh, how the budget should be structured? Well, it, it yeah, I'm one one of eleven. So um, it. It will be interesting to see what the what the slate of commissioners looks like, um, but uh, I would I would be one that would tend to try to trim where we can. Mm -hmm. um, a billion dollars is a lot of money, and you're right, sixty percent of that goes to Knox County Schools, and a lot of that's mandated. We don't really have a lot of say over how that's spent because that you know obviously goes to uh, the school board and, and is mandated by the state. But um, there's four hundred million dollars left to to deal with and. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, there there have been some uh, concerns of where where it was spent. I know um, there there was some uh, uh, gears grinding between uh, the mayor and the sheriff's department, and then I think that that worked out well. Um, the sheriff's department, uh, you know, they they needed it. Um, you know, we we have we need to make sure that we can maintain um, the officers that we have, recruit good officers, um, and then same thing in the in the school system as well. When they they had a Pretty hefty increase in, in their budget as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in in the labor market we're in, um, it's competitive. And when when outside businesses and, and employers are offering higher pay, we need to be competitive uh, to make sure that we can have the the educators, the teachers, um, and the uh, the emergency personnel that that we need to, to function and and uh, as a as a county. So. Um, I think there there can be some some fat to be trimmed, but I, I understand that the the increase in the budget in many areas was necessary. Um, so I'm I'm not necessarily I'm definitely not liberal minded um, in just free spending to make it look like we have a lot of money. We're doing things. You can't just right. throw you can't just throw money to, at a problem and expect to solve it. Um, so okay, all right. <clears throat> um, in the in the time that we have left, and you indicated that you weren't a celebrity, you weren't a star, yeah. but but uh, people in your area know who you are. Um, in the in this minute that we have left, tell voters what they need to know about Adam Thompson in terms of why they should vote for you. I'm authentic. What you what you see is what you get. Um, I this is my first time running for office. I'm not a I'm not a politician. Um, the eighth district is very special. It's unique. Um, we're made up of a lot of rural communities who are very close, uh, very tight knit, but we all have the very similar values, very similar concerns. Um, what what how the the issues that are facing Coryton and Gibbs are the same ones that are fa facing Carter, Strawberry Plains, Mascot, uh, East Knox, that area. Um, the growth is coming for all of us, um, and there, you know we can't avoid it. Um, I just I've tried for. The last several years to be a voice of the community and listen listen to their uh, their concerns, and I feel like this is the time to to step up and actually have a vote on commission. So, okay, all right, Adam, I really appreciate your time today. Oh, thank you very much.